Hi, welcome to the Frugal Frau. I'm Suki, your host. And today we're going to make a wooden spoon. Now, I have a very special wooden spoon that I specifically asked my husband to make for me. And it's a copy of this spoon. He gave this spoon to me many years ago when we first got together. And I always liked it because it had this little slot in it. I don't know if you can see that. Let's zoom in on that. And this little slot has this little notch at the top. And what that allows the spoon to do is to, to clip over the edge of your pan so the spoon is handy while whatever you're stirring is still dripping into the pot so you don't need to have a spoon rest or anything. Which, because I often cook on the wood cook stove, that's very handy. And I don't want necessarily a spoon rest sitting on the hot surface of the wood cook stove. Now, I asked my husband to make some modifications to this spoon and make sure he got the slot maybe a little bit larger because uh, some of my pots are a little bit thicker on the end and that is my uh, big stock pot has a little rim on it and that doesn't it needs to sit a little more easily on there and then I wanted the handle to be slightly longer and then to come out in this direction a little more, more curved so that the spoon sat better in my hand it wouldn't slip out and it was also would be also well balanced because I like to have the spoon be able to rest against my hand. Now I know that seems all quirky and everything, but since we're going to the trouble to make homemade spoons here, uh, I thought that would be a nice thing to ask my husband to do. And I know he's quite capable of doing that. So we're going to show you how we make this spoon today. Here, my husband Tom is using the existing wooden spoons we have instead of a cardstock pattern, which you could also make. And uh, let's see if he makes this spoon a little bit longer, which is what I asked for. Now he did make that curve wider on that other end, so that's fine. That was the important part. He couldn't get his pencil into that notch, so he's just using his marking knife to mark out approximately where that notch is. You can see that there are many pieces of wood or blanks for spoons. We actually made a whole group of spoons in addition to just the one that we're discussing in this video. Tom is using his jigsaw to cut these spoons out quickly. You could also use a turning saw if that's what you had and you didn't feel like dealing with the jigsaw. The spoons are all cut out and now he's simply drilling the hole which you can use to hang the spoon on a cord or other wire or ribbon. Next Tom is marking with a pencil the boundaries of the carve out for the concave part of the spoon. Just for extra measure he marks lines all over that center part that will be carved out. With the spoon blank in the vise, Tom is marking the place where he will begin the two cuts to start that notch, which is the part that hangs onto the edge of the pot. The knife cuts just serve as guides for the saw because he will be using a cross cut saw to cut a good portion of that notch. The two sides of the notch are completely sawn 
and he's using a chisel just to remove the waste. He can also use that chisel to start getting the notch cleared that's off to the right because the notch is kind of an L-shaped notch rounded into the short end of the L. You can see the cut with the chisel is just straight and he will later on round that end of the notch out. Establish the boundaries of the area which you are going to carve out into the concave section of the spoon with a knife. Cut the outline first and then cut into the outline from the inside edge of the concavity to help delineate that line. And you'll see him do that in a moment here. He now cuts into the original outline from the inside portion of the spoon. And that just makes a little ridge, which is going to assist in the carving out of the concavity, which is on this side of the spoon. The concave edges are clearly delineated. Now it's time to start chiseling out the concavity section. He's using a gouge and he's going to use a couple sizes of gouges and perhaps even use a straight edge chisel here and there to accomplish this task. Just be patient with this uh, and don't try to take off too much material at once. You can keep smoothing it and give it the final smooth at the end. Be cognizant of the depth to which you are carving this concavity. You do not want to carve all the way through to the other side of the spoon. It is okay to pick up the mallet now and then to provide a bit more force on that gouge. This is birch and it's quite hard. Thomas picked up a slightly smaller gouge to start refining the initial cuts and to smooth out some of the ridges. At this point, he's going across some of the original cuts to assist in that process. The concave bowl of the spoon is complete. Now it's time to work on the back side and round that out. Remember this was cut from flat stock so it has kind of sharp edges. So in order to remove those he's starting off with a draw shave and you can see that he also has on the bench and handy two spoke shaves. Those are the green and red tools on the bench. The one on the left has a curved blade and the one on the right has a flat blade and both of them will be utilized in finishing this spoon and carving the back side out. Tom has picked up the flat bladed spoke shave to further cut some of the curve into the back side of that spoon. This blade will take a bit more material off than the curved one. The draw shave, which was the one he started off with, takes a lot more aggressive cut, and the spoke shaves take less aggressive cuts. Depending on the angle that you hold the flat one or the curved one, they will take off different amounts of material. To get the other edge of the back side, he's had to turn the spoon in the vise and uh, he's basically going to go through the same process even though you really can't see that clearly here. There we go. 
continuing on with the rounding part of the handle. He's just turned the spoon and now he's working on the actual handle part, just going through the same process. To do some of the final smoothing, he just uses a scraper blade. That takes off a lot of ditzels and things and does more than it looks like it's doing. Now Tom is using his French curved shaped scraper blade to get into the actual concave bowl of the spoon. And that also helps to smooth it out quite a bit. We took the spoon outside to torify it with the propane torch. Torifying, yes, it is burning the wood, but it is sealing the wood and also smoothing it out and going to make it a lot more resistant to absorbing food, etc. Back inside, it's time to sand the work. And this is just a light sanding to get some of the excess carbon off. The final step in these spoons is to oil them. Here is one of the larger spoons we made today. And here's the spoon that we highlighted in this video with its pot hanging slot. The spoon has been oiled with its first coat of oil. Letting it dry overnight, we will give it a second coat of oil and that will prevent the carbon or the black from getting on our fingers when we use the spoon and also finally seal it. Okay, here is the finished wooden spoon and you can see that it's quite dark and black and that's because we torrified it with a torch and then put oil on it. Now the oil mixture that my husband likes to use is a three-part mixture. It's one-third paint thinner, one-third linseed oil, and one-third oil-based spar varnish. And uh, that seals this up really nicely so that you don't get black. Now I'm still getting a little bit of black on my finger, but it's going to get a second coat of oil. Then it's going to sit overnight. And by the time that that happens, it will no longer exude any black on me and it will be quite sealed uh, and torrifying for those of you who may not know this is a good way of actually sealing and preserving wood. Uh, it's used on, it was used in Europe and I think Nor Norway for sealing wood siding. And they, they also used pitch and other things, but torrifying, I've seen it done uh, even in modern times for people using siding and things like that for outdoor tools, etc. Anyways, we like to do it to our spoons and uh, not only do we do it on spoons, we've also done it on homemade doorknobs, but that's another video. So, but I just wanted to show you this beautiful spoon and uh, I'm really happy and it's got a little hole so I can hang it up. So I'll put some kind of cord cords in there to hang that up. Thank you so much for watching.